Thank you very much. Shumai Aberystwyth. <laughs> what an enormous pleasure and privilege it is to be here with you today to address your national conference. And let me say it is particularly special to be here in Plaid Cymru's 90th year. The SNP and Plaid Cymru are, of course, often said to be sister parties. But given that you are 90 and we are only 81, <laughs> that must mean you're our big sister. And of course, I bring with me fraternal greetings from your sisters and from your brothers in the SNP. We were extremely fortunate last weekend to have Leanne address our conference in Aberdeen. And I hope that it was obvious in the warm reception that she received just how much love, respect and solidarity we in the SNP have for all of you in Plaid Cymru. I also want to take this opportunity to say a heartfelt and huge thank you on behalf of everybody in the SNP to every single one of you in Plaid Cymru. As you might have noticed we had the small matter of a referendum last year. <laughs> now, as you might also have noticed, we didn't quite manage to win it. But make no mistake, Scotland is on a journey and I have no doubt whatsoever that the destination of that journey is independence for our country. <laughs> But last year, when we were out there making the case for independence against the massed ranks of the Westminster establishment, it sometimes felt a little bit lonely, or at least it did feel lonely, until, as I travelled around Scotland in the final days of that campaign, something very special started to happen. Everywhere I went, from Glasgow to Aberdeen, Edinburgh to Inverness, in every single corner of the country, I started to run into members of Plaid Cymru. <laughs> you know, I even turned up one night, one Friday night, at a public meeting in Glasgow, which had been organised for Polish Scots. As it turned out, there weren't many Polish Scots there, but the room was absolutely full of Welsh people. <laughs> the fact is, so many of you gave up your holidays and you spent your hard-earned cash to make the trip to Scotland to help us campaign for a yes vote. Your enthusiasm and your generosity were phenomenal. You showed us real friendship and support and you gave us a boost when we most needed it. You stood shoulder to shoulder with us in the biggest campaign of our lives and we shall be forever grateful to you. I just hope that one day we get to repay the favour. <clears throat> you know, the connections between our two parties go back a very, very long way. They go back to even before Leanne and I uh, were born. Yes, they go that <laughs> far back. The seminal by-election victories that David has just referred to in the 1960s of Gwynfer Evans for Plaid Cymru and Winnie Ewing for the SNP occurred within just a matter of months of each other. And in a Westminster Parliament that was filled almost completely with Labour and Tory MPs, Gwynfer and Winnie formed a close bond and they quickly became a force to be reckoned with. And working together, Winnie and Gwynfer forced Westminster to sit up and to take notice of Wales and Scotland. And for the first time, Westminster had to seriously confront the idea of our two nations demanding our own political voice. Now, of course, progress wasn't as fast as Gwynfer and Winnie would have hoped for. It took several decades before devolution was finally delivered. 
But there is no doubt whatsoever that neither Leanne nor I would be where we are right now were it not for the persistence and the hard work of those who tilled the soil before us in both of our parties. We truly do stand on the shoulders of giants and we owe them an enormous debt of gratitude. Of course, it's not just our parties that have a very close bond. As nations, Scotland and Wales also have a great deal in common. And I'm not just talking about the fact that we were both robbed in the final minutes of the Rugby World Cup <laughs> quarter finals. And my goodness, were we robbed. <laughs> Having said that, at least you here in Wales have Euro 2016 to look forward to. And on that note, congratulations on a great achievement and the very best of luck in France next summer. But friends, the Celtic connections our countries share run deep. In preparing to come here to Wales today, I discovered that the Celtic language initially spoken in my home city of Glasgow is most closely related to modern Welsh, uh, which makes you wonder why my pronunciation is quite so bad. Uh, but it does, I suppose, explain why the Scots and the Welsh have always had a fairly good understanding of each other. Even the name Glasgow is apparently Welsh. I'm told it refers to the green fields once found in front of what is now Glasgow Cathedral. Uh, both of our countries, of course, boast stunning landscapes that have an enduring appeal in our own hearts and in hearts the world over. Our industrial heartlands built on coal mining, shipbuilding and steel have so often experienced the same rise and fall in fortunes and they have so often been let down by successive UK governments and as <laughs> as communities in both Wales and Scotland and indeed in England again fight for jobs in our steel industry I know that Plaid and the SNP will stand with them in offering support and solidarity uh, let me say here today what I said directly to steel workers in Scotland yesterday. As First Minister of Scotland, I am determined that my government will do everything possible to secure a future for that industry. As First Minister, I am not prepared to let our steel industry die without a fight. Of course, it is from these industrial heartlands and the ethos of hard work and equality that runs through them that great reformers like Keir Hardy and Nye Bevan emerged. Their legacies today still guide so much of our modern day politics. They drive our shared belief in an NHS that is publicly owned and free to all. They drive our belief in the right of all of us to a roof over our heads and a home to call our own. And they drive a belief that is so important today when it is under so much attack from the Tories. A belief in the vital importance in any civilised society of a social security safety net that guarantees dignity and fairness. It is perhaps because of these shared experiences and that common bond that we are able to say and to say so proudly that today Scotland and Wales are home to the only real anti-austerity parties anywhere in the UK. In Cardiff, in Edinburgh and at Westminster, it is the SNP and Plaid Cymru who stand strong together against austerity. And let's make this clear today. The SNP and Plaid will stand firm against tax credit cuts that will devastate working families. We will oppose the Tory assault on the vulnerable and the disabled. We will support investment in our public services, in our infrastructure and in our economy. And we will stand united in support of human rights and the essential freedoms of trade unions. Our two parties will also stand strong and united. 
we will always stand strong and united against the unjustified, unaffordable and downright immoral plans to spend £100 billion on a new generation of Trident nuclear weapons. So that, that is our alliance. Plaid and the SNP putting forward the progressive case at Westminster and presenting the real and the only opposition to the Tories. And this week, it seems we also have something new in common. In Scotland, we call it the Vow. In Wales, it is the Silk Commission. In each of our nations, these proposals represent yet more broken promises from a Tory government. You know, it comes as absolutely no surprise to me that the Wales Bill published last week doesn't deliver on the ambitions that the people of Wales have. We have some experience ourselves of being let down in promises of more powers. And yesterday, we saw the Tories push English votes for English laws through the House of Commons. The aptly named evil turns Scottish and Welsh MPs into second-class citizens in the House of Commons and prevents them voting even on issues that will have an impact on our countries. It is outrageous. You know, I always thought it was the SNP's job in Scotland to persuade people of the case for independence. But these days it seems the Tories are keen to do that job for us. So yes, just like Wales, Scotland has plenty of experience of Westminster governments treating us with disdain. But as the Wales Bill goes through the Commons, I know that Plaid Cymru will work hard to make it better and to make sure it delivers a fair deal for Wales. And just as you and Plaid Cymru stood with us in the referendum, just as you have assisted our MPs through the Scotland Bill, let me promise you here today that the SNP will stand shoulder to shoulder with you in your continued endeavours to demand a better deal for Wales and to see the Westminster promises made to Wales delivered and delivered in full. <laughs> Friends, my visit to Wales today coincides with the start of the SNP's campaign to win a third term in government in Scotland. And it also, of course, coincides with the start of your campaign to make Leanne Wood the First Minister of Wales. <laughs> Perhaps even better than that, to elect Leanne to be just like I am in Scotland, the first woman First Minister of her country. You know, I consider myself lucky to have had the opportunity to get to know Leanne over the past couple of years. I'm very proud to call her a friend. But let me tell you something much more relevant to you here in Wales. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. In Leanne Wood, you have a leader of real star quality. <laughs> and remember, that's not an opinion that I have formed from afar. It's an opinion I have formed from close quarters. In April, Leanne and I found ourselves on a stage in Manchester, stuck quite literally between David Cameron and Ed Miliband. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. But you know, it quickly became obvious to everyone watching the debate that night that the difference between Ed and Dave wasn't their politics, it was simply the colour of their ties. But on that stage, as Ed and Dave battled it out over who was more austere, who would be toughest on welfare and who was most keen on Trident. Leanne did something different. Firmly 
passionately, eloquently, Leanne Wood spoke up for Wales. When Labour said the status quo was good enough for Wales, Leanne challenged that arrogance and she did so on behalf of the people of this country. When Labour couldn't answer for their failure to protect Wales from the worst impacts of the recent recession, or indeed the recession before that, Leanne spoke up loudly for those communities in Wales that continue to face unemployment and deprivation. And when the Tories pushed their ideological plans for austerity, I knew that Leanne was standing next to me on that platform as a strong voice against austerity. But my favourite moment in that debate, indeed I think everyone's favourite moment in that debate, was when Leanne had the guts to call out Nigel Farage for his xenophobia and intolerance. During that debate, I was proud to have Leanne as a friend. I know Plaid Cymru was proud to have her as its leader. In my view, that night, Leanne put it beyond any doubt whatsoever that she is ready and able to lead Wales as your First Minister. And so to the people of Wales, I simply say this. If you were proud of Leanne too that night when she represented Wales, just think how much more proud you would be if she was representing Wales every single day as your First Minister. And you know what? It is in your hands to make that happen. Wales is a great country. You deserve a government that focuses every day on raising the ambition of this country and on building its success. Last weekend in Aberdeen, Leanne told us that it isn't devolution that is failing Wales, it is Labour that is failing Wales. <laughs> and I was thinking about that as I was preparing to come here today, and I remember that just eight short years ago, we faced exactly the same situation in Scotland. It wasn't devolution or the Scottish Parliament that had lost people's trust. It was a lackluster Labour Party that had lost people's trust. But even though people were disillusioned with Labour, many didn't yet see the SNP as a strong enough alternative. Eight years ago, we had just 25 out of 129 members of the Scottish Parliament. We only had six MPs at Westminster. Many commentators thought that our best days, 11 MPs, and a record 35 members of the Scottish Parliament were firmly behind us. Labour were in government at Holyrood, in government at Westminster, and they controlled local authorities right across our country. Most of Scotland had only ever known a Labour government. Uh, the country had voted Labour at every election since 1959. The result, trust in our new Parliament, a Parliament that the people of Scotland had so long strived for, had dropped by 30% since it was first established. It was damaged by a government more concerned with protecting its own position than in protecting the people it represented. In other words, eight years ago, we in Scotland faced many of the same challenges you face now with a Labour government that had become complacent and careless. You know, leading the opposition in Holyrood back then, I regularly grilled Labour's First Minister on a health service that was failing, council tax bills that had increased, and perhaps worst of all, on a chronic lack of ambition for our country. I stood in Parliament back then opposing a Labour government whose mantra, whose own mantra, quite seriously, was that they would do less better. How's that for ambition? <laughs> I bet it sounds a bit familiar. Eight years ago, Scotland had a government with no real ambition leading the country into a cul-de-sac of low aspiration. And yet for all of that, it wasn't inevitable that the SNP would win. Indeed, if I think back to October 2006, when we were the same distance from an election that you are now, uh, with the obvious exception of Alex Salmond, who likes a flutter, very, very few people would have put money on an SNP victory. We'd never been in government. 
We had never led the country, so not many people seriously thought we could become the governing party. But friends, we did then what you and Plaid Cymru will do now. We put forward ideas. We showed people our ambition for the country. We stopped just talking the opposition down and started to tell people what we would do better. We talked about how we would make a difference and when we would do it. We began to write a better future for Scotland and vote by vote, door by door, we won the support of the Scottish people. And by doing that, we were able to prove the doubters wrong. We were able to win the election in Scotland. So what am I saying? Well, what I'm saying, and it's my key message to you today, is this. If the SNP can win in Scotland, there is no reason, no reason at all, that Plaid Cymru can also win in Wales. Not at some distant point in the future, but now, next May, at this election. Believe me, you can win. Believe in it, work for it, and you will do it. And when Wales does turn from Labour to a party with ambition, vision, and determination, people will realise just how different things can be. How do I know? Because that's what happened in Scotland. Take health. I know it's high up the agenda in Wales, and it is in Scotland too. Don't get me wrong, our NHS faces big challenges. An ageing population is leading to increasing demand and it's a daily focus of me and my government to make sure that we support our NHS to meet that demand. But here's the reality. If Labour had won back in 2007, our NHS would be less able to meet that demand, not more able. Back then, Labour said that any extra cash would be spent on education and that the NHS would have to quotes, cut its cloth. They also planned to close down two accident and emergency units. The SNP promised that these a &E units would stay open. We found a way to keep them open. And since we saved them from Labour's acts, they have treated more than 800,000 patients between them. And while we have big issues and challenges to address, the fact is that our NHS is now performing better against tougher targets than it did at any point under Labour. And it is performing better, much better, than the NHS in Wales is under a Labour government. So the message is that Wales doesn't have to settle for the best Labour can do or the worst that the Tories can do. Wales can do better than that. You know, the home of the NHS deserves a party that supports the NHS, and I believe that party is Plaid Cymru. And it's not just in health that the SNP has made a difference. We've rebuilt or refurbished one-fifth of all of our school buildings. Our school leavers do much better than ever before. We've delivered a record number of modern apprenticeships. A higher proportion of our workforce now earn the living wage, the real living wage, not George Osborne's living wage, than any other nation in the UK. Uh, Labour built just six council houses, six council houses in the last four years in government in Scotland. The SNP, we started a new generation of council house building. We abolished the right to buy and we are on track to meet our target of 30,000 affordable homes in this parliament. Recorded crime in Scotland is at a 41 year low and we've got the most competitive business rates regime anywhere in the UK. And you know, even where our powers are limited, we've acted to protect people from Tory cuts. We've used powers that we have, powers that the Welsh Assembly also has, to make sure that no one, no one in Scotland has to pay the Tory bedroom tax. Surely. Surely there is no greater shame on this Welsh Labour government than its refusal to protect people from the bedroom tax.
Friends, the SNP government isn't perfect, and certainly nor am I. No government, no leader ever will be. But we work hard every day to win and retain the trust of the people of Scotland, and I know that we share that ethos with Plaid Cymru. Being in government means we have a responsibility to acknowledge the problems we see and take action to rectify them. Being in government means we have to look candidly at the country we live in and think hard about how we make it better. It means we have to take tough decisions and tackle difficult issues. That's what we've been doing every day since elected as a minority government in 2007. It's what we will continue to do if re-elected in May, and it's what I know Leanne and her team are ready to do for Wales too. Just as the SNP will always put Scotland and Scotland's needs first, so Plaid Cymru are the only party that will truly stand up for this nation of Wales. I invite you to imagine this, a strong SNP Plaid team at Westminster, a Plaid Cymru government here in Wales and an SNP government in Scotland. How formidable would that be? And how, how much more effective at standing up to the Tories than Labour will ever be? So if people here in Wales are willing to listen to a message from up north, the message I have based on our experience in Scotland is this. If Labour and the Tories are not meeting your aspirations for your country, for your health service or for your education system, if they're cutting the tax credits you rely on, if they're pushing people into poverty, if they're failing to create the jobs and the opportunities that our young people need, then it is time to make a change. It doesn't matter whether you're Welsh or English, Pakistani or Polish or even Scottish. Plaid Cymru in Wales, just as the SNP are in Scotland, is a home for all of those who burn with ambition for this wonderful country. Friends, I spoke at the start about the many connections between Scotland and Wales. And there is something else that connects our two nations. Scotland and Wales both have a keen sense of history. I know you lost a much-loved historian this year. Dr John Davis made a huge contribution to your nation. Indeed, he made a huge contribution to my nation, joining as he did the hundreds of Welsh men and women who helped his campaign for a yes vote last year. John wrote about the history of Wales. He knew, as we do, that history is so important. It grounds us, it gives us a story, it gives us something to build the future on. But John always did have one eye on the future. He knew, as you do, that his and your history of Wales is only partly written. He knew that Wales, just like Scotland, must look continually to the future. We can't alter the past, we can't undo the years of failed Labour and Tory governments, but with hard work and ambition, we can change the future for the better. In Scotland, we have begun that journey. In Wales, you can start that change in May. You can be the change Wales needs. The ambition, the ideas, the optimism that define your party, the party of Wales, will be key to winning May's election and driving your country forward. You are the people who can write the next chapter in the history of this country. And when you do, friends, no one will be prouder of you than your friends in the SNP. <laughs> Conference. I hope very much that I can return to your conference next year as the re-elected First Minister of Scotland. And if I do, nothing will give me greater pleasure than to share a stage with Leanne Wood, the newly elected First Minister of Wales. So, go on, get out there, be that change, seize the opportunity, go and win this election for Wales. Thank you very much.